Hello, everyone. Um, this could be embarrassing because in some ways, I've, I've always been terrible at trying to work out what on earth it is that I actually want to do for a living. So, you know, I started off actually as a media, in media, as a, as a TV buyer. Uh, I begged to be part of the uh, account planning department. I ended up running a communication strategy agency and now I'm at BBH uh, as running the strategy department. And in some ways, this kind of talk about media channels is a validation of this kind of rambling and circuitous route to my job. But, um, and in some ways, what I wanted to do was just kind of talk about some things that are really personal to me about my point of view about this. and just very practical. I want to show you some work that I've made and my teams have been responsible for making and talk about how briefing and approach to media is responsible for that. But I think, first of all, I kind of just wanted to start with something really, really simple about briefing and what briefing exists to do. I think modern briefing is about, is, is about grasping a whole series of new opportunities to, to really get to better ideas. But at, at its heart, briefings and briefs are, are, are there to fulfill the same purpose that they've always done, which is to get to ideas that solve, solve business problems. And in doing so, yeah, they are about focusing and liberating creativity. It's about saying, you know, this is what we want this idea to do and opening up possibility and potential to enable that, that to be achieved in the most original and different way possible. That, that's always been the case and it will continue to be the case. Um, but modern briefing, I think, is, has got some new behaviours to it and some ways of tackling that problem. As, as we've already heard from our, from our first speaker, you know, you know, modern briefing isn't just about the singularity of a brief that's pushed under the, the creative's door. It's, a, it's an iterative process. It's a process that develops, you know, that has contributions from many different sources. It's collaborative between creatives, between planners, clients, media agencies, and so on. It's, a, it's, a, it's an increasingly collaborative process. Great briefs have always been stimulating, but I think what's really interesting in, in seeing some of the great new talent that's coming to our agency, I, what you see is, you know, an ability for everybody to be creative and in that sense you know the brief is increasingly you know a creative process it, it, it is something that is designed to be evocative it's designed to bring to life uh, the, as Richard was talking about what people love and in its sense you know the way in which we brief should be stimulating it should stimulate the senses and I think in terms of the skills that are required in briefing, and I th I'm just talking again very personally, you know, we're very ex interested in sort of breaking down the divisions, and, and here are just some of the divisions that, you know, kind of typify where skills lie, and, and, and creating a, a hybrid set of skills that give us real expertise. It's really easy to go out there and sort of search the blogosphere and, and to cobble together new ideas, but technique is at the heart of great briefing. Technique is, you know, is found in some, a great body of knowledge and expertise that's built over years in what's called account planning. There's a whole you know, great you know, art of media planning that can, I think, give new skills and expertise and, and help us. But also, I think, new, new types of, of, of skills and techniques really help and I'll talk briefly about why I think you know, user experience design is also an interesting thing and to, to throw into the mix. So skills are really important, it's too easy to just to talk but skills are very very important. Um, so just to talk about you know, more specifically about media, so what do I, why, why media and what, what does media have to contribute to, to modern briefing. I think, you know, I was asked to talk about media channels. I don't believe in media channels. You know, channels to me sound like pipes, you know, and pipes are best left to plumbers. You know, media aren't, isn't just delivery mechanisms for ads or, you know, ways of intruding into people's lives. So I don't like thinking about media channels. I just don't, don't think it's a very useful concept. Um, and I also think, you know, as in a creative, I think it's, media is far too important to be left to a small group of people who have the word media in their job description or description of an agency. I think media is, 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 a fa is part of the fabric of life and actually it should, it should be everybody's responsibility. It should be the responsibility of you know, all planners, it should be the responsibility of creditors, and it should be the responsibility of clients. It's far too important to be left to media agencies. When I was growing up in the 80s, you know, I, I grew up in Harrow, a, sort of a suburb of northwest London, and, and at that time I spent most of my time running away from skinheads. But you know, I, I spent my pocket money once on, on buying this magazine called ID. I wasn't really sure what it was about. Madonna was on the front cover, and I sort of opened up this magazine, and it, 
literally transported me into a completely different world, a world you know, of, of ideas, a world of, of, of people that I would never have experienced. And I think you know, what it did there, you know, it, was, it shaped my attitudes, it shaped the way I looked at the world, you know, inspired me to think about things in a very different way. And I think that's what media does. It's not just a way of transmitting messages. You know, media is culture. You know, media is the very fabric of the way that ideas are shared and, 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 and are, are part of the way that we communally and, co and collectively view the world. You know, that is an important facet of how brands are built, you know, about how they create meaning in a popular sense. I think we touched on earlier as well, you know, brands like Red Bull spend an inordinate amount of resources and time and effort building media properties. They invest in everything from the Grand Prix to snowboarding to, to, DJ, to DJ contests. What, they actually have a kind of a very kind of central division which is just all about managing their media, Red Bull Media. And I think this is a very extreme version of it, but in, I think in a very real sense, all brands in the modern world are media brands, you know, whether it's actually managing their own websites, their, their, their Facebook activity, Twitter, their packaging, you know, all, media, all brands are managing their media activity and all brands are media brands. Uh, I was lucky enough to go to Cannes recently and one of the th ideas that I absolutely loved and if you haven't seen it, go and have a look at it out, look at it out which is the uh, work from Droga 5 which they, they were doing about bone marrow transplants and what they realised was the big problem was they don't have enough donor matches uh, because people think it's really difficult but it only needs two drops of blood you know? so what they did was instead of doing a campaign which was all about awareness of bone marrow the issues around bone marrow and trying to encourage people to 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 uh, to, to to sign up to to be tested what they did was they created a brand of plasters sticking plasters so that whenever you cut yourself use the plasters but then what you did is you swab you took a little swab of blood posted it to the bone marrow transplant and they had a match you know, so there, the medium isn't posters or some incredible, interesting digital participation platform. The medium is plasters, you know, and I think, you know, it's just a brilliantly simple idea, but I think in the modern world, everything is media. Everything that communicates, everything that is, an, is, is able to convey an idea is media, and that's really, really important. So, just on to, if that's, that's the way I think about media, just on to how you brief it. Uh, I just kind of, one thing that we're always talking about, and, uh, and I've been talking about it for years, and I'm bored rigid by it, is, so, okay, right, you, you really believe in media, you think media is really important in the creative process, where does it come? Does it come before an idea? Shouldn't ideas drive the media? The truth is, it's kind of, you know, media isn't just an important part of, you know, the way you think about ideas, it should kind of inform the idea, it should be part of the inspiration to an idea, it should, you know, it should reveal things about what people will love and to, to, to kind of reference a couple of my speakers, you know, it should also give clear direction, you know, there might be some very, very clear channels that we need to try and engage with, we need to talk to people at particular moments in time, you know, in a way that's relevant to them, and so media might give real direction to an idea. Media might be very central to the very expression of, idea, of an idea, you know, the idea might be the medium. You know, and, and out of an idea might, again, inform the way where, where you actually want to communicate and how you want to engage people. But also, increasingly, you know, media isn't, isn't just about singular things, it's about the navigation of people between many different experiences. But just to show a couple of examples, yeah, in terms of inspiration, I think media can be incredibly evocative at bringing to life themes and ideas and what people are interested in love. You know, when dealing with the bar for Barclays on the banking crisis, it's incredibly evocative. You, you can see very clearly when looking at the media, you know, the fear and uncertainty and paralysis of people in the financial sector. When trying to talk about Baileys and think about where Baileys as a brand might go, it's really interesting looking at you know, actually what, how are modern women represented and how do women in the modern world want to see themselves, not as sort of chocoholics, but as you know, spirited women with attitudes. You know, direction yeah, can be given you know, really clearly you know, in terms of media. Sometimes the idea absolutely comes from an insight into the media. Our work in Yo Valley came from a very simple insight, which is you know, modern families congregate around the X factor. So if you want to sell yogurt, try and find a way to make that relevant to what people really are interested in. You know, and so actually communicate in that way. Communicate on the breakfast table. 
for Weetabix. Actually, the pack is absolutely crucial. So what we did was created a game in order to encourage people to get the pack out of the cupboard. And we created an augmented reality game to basically turn the pack into a, a part of the game. At the Google, relevant posters encouraging people for voice search on mobile to get out their phone and try it out, a phonetics campaign. Each uh, individual site targeted to the location. And in terms of the expression of the idea, you know, create the media that best expresses the idea. You know, for ASOS, guys were bored by and not really interested in looking at fashion mags or fashion media to look at to what they want to wear. So we created films that actually brought to life kind of aspects of culture like breakdancing, allowed people to click into the films and, and buy, you know, and buy directly from the films themselves. We wanted to teach people about finance for Barclays, young ki kids about finance, create a game in which they can play and learn lessons along the way. You know, don't tell them about how to do it and let them experience it and learn for themselves. For Burberry, our idea was very, very simple. The fashion show, which is the very heart of what, the way your brand communicates, shouldn't be something that's behind closed doors for 300 VIPs. It should be a global experience that fashion uh, fans around the world can experience. Very, very simple media idea. And just finally, just final section, just around navigation, I was very lucky to kind of meet Zaha Hadid the other day, and she was, she was talking about her, how buildings, she's not obsessed by buildings. Buildings to her are a way to direct people through space. And I thought that was a really, really interesting idea. We're often obsessed by the objects that we create, and we don't think enough about how we want people to move through them. So, so the final piece about media is actually about navigation. I think, importantly, it's not just about an individual ideas, it's about how we want people to move through them, how we want them to flow through one experience another to another to create more value. And, and I think there, the design of those things can be incredibly simple. It's about the allocation of channels to different tasks. It can be about a flow that, that feels more like a user experience where you're trying to understand what people might do at any one point and how you want them to navigate from across a whole range of experiences to create value. Or they can be very inspirational. This is one for Google that we use, you know, just trying to think about the Chrome campaign and how the different uh, parts of the overall brand experience add up to something that really has some big effect. And I think just very finally, you know, media is often, you know, reduced to just questions about numbers and media placements. But media should be about ideas. Your briefing should be about evoking imagination and imagination. Quite, I'd say it's much more important than knowledge. Thank you.